Uh, let's talk to our friend, a regular of a Monday, Conservative commentator, Connor Tomlinson. Evening, Connor. Evening, Kevin. You introduced me as a friend. I'm clearly growing on you. You are a friend. Of, yeah, like fungus, like uh, mushrooms, you know. Uh, listen, what do you think about this? Uh, I mean, come on. This is the day that the woke warriors officially went mad, isn't it? Uh, I think that day was passed quite a while ago, though. To be fair, with all the pen farthing coverage this week, I'm not sure what they hate more, dogs or our armed forces. I'll, <laughs> I'll let them work that one out. Yeah. Um, though, I, I, I agree with everyone who's probably going, why are two grown men on a bank holiday Monday night talking about a kid's cartoon with dog cops? It's a bit silly. I think we should probably justify why we should be talking about it. And as much as you say, oh, we shouldn't take it seriously, I think actually parents particularly should take it very seriously what their kids are watching. Because unfortunately, the TV, um, YouTube, etc., as a lot of these insidious programs and, and uh, YouTube videos that are uncontrollable have proven they're not very good babysitter. So you had a while ago, YouTube kids accidentally fed some videos to children which had some pretty obscene content in them, masked up with Spider-Man and Elsa when actually they were not age appropriate at all or years ago we had some very good cartoons uh, pre-90s disney movies things like he-man and that had some really strong moral messaging not just you know uh, don't just be unkind to animals but had men and women of integrity telling the truth and forthrightly confronting evil those days are long gone and although poor patrol i'm sure it's perfectly pleasant i don't make it a sort of saturday morning cartoon viewing for, for myself yeah. Funnily enough, I don't think I'm their intended demographic. Yeah. Um, a lot of the time now, they've got more deconstructive, uh, ironic millennial cartoons. Like they've remade He Man to uh, be masters of the universe. They kill him off in the first episode, and they've got some androgynous uh, warrior woman who walks around lecturing everyone like a Karen with bigger shoulders than me, which I was very upset about. And then things like Steven Universe, where they have um, messages like uh, see color, be anti racist. I don't see how that quite gels with MLK's dream. During Pride Month, funnily enough, Nickelodeon, where Paw Patrol is actually shown, they had a drag queen come on and lecture kids on pride using the racial pride pride flag and they had cartoons of animals that had had gender transition surgery scars on them so parents need to monitor things much more closely and i think something like paw patrol would probably be a more wholesome thing to sit down yeah. and have them watch than a lot of these other cartoons here's uh this is it was written uh by a british tv writer called keith chapman he's the man behind bob the builder uh now the patrol motto the poor patrol motto is no job is too big no pup is too small uh you've got marshall the dalmatian firefighter rubble a bulldog construction worker rocky a mongrel who drives a recycling truck and zuma a Labrador who travels on a hovercraft. The Guardian, uh, that fine newspaper that I know you and I are massive fans of, uh, Connor, yep. uh, in its review of Poor Patrol, uh, bearing in mind what I just told you, this is what it said. It's, it's, it was author authoritarian, neoliberal propaganda. It's patriarchal gender performance uh is a disgrace because most of the animated puppies are male only one of the six original dogs sky a cockapoo helicopter pilot is female i mean there you go oh i'd like to know i think that's probably very bigoted actually because how are the guardian presupposing all the genders of these dogs when half of them have probably been spayed so it's not very fair to uh, to impose that on them, but there you go. Um, it's it's rather ridiculous. It also reminds me of when I don't know how many of your viewers might know about this, but, but three academics became very famous. Uh, Helen Helen Pluckrose, James Lindsay, and Peter Bogosian. They made a bunch of fake academic papers and actually submitted them to real journals. And one of them was they changed some of the lines in Mein Kampf from like the insidious things of where they accuse Jews of running the world to the word patriarchy and actually got published in a feminist journal. Very laughable, horrible things like that. One of them that got done was they said, oh, we're going to look at Oregon dog parks and dogs humping other dogs is ex ex uh, existence of human rape culture. And that got published in an academic journal and actually got paid for. So this sort of reminds me of that kind of garbage of where it's not it's not particularly of any merit worth listening to, but they're still paid for it anyway. And by the way, uh, you know, obviously the proposition that the, the idea that some stupid cartoon indoctrinates kids into believing anything i think is dubious uh, but if it indoctrinates them into a pro police stance that's a good thing isn't it well okay here's something we might we might have a contention on but i think i might be able to win you over with this one clearly they're not against propaganda they're against your propaganda and clearly i don't think they're actually against defunding the police i think they're against defunding your police because their complaint is not that the police especially the met nowadays have become the police of diversity and tolerance beating up lockdown protesters sicking dogs on them last weekend um, they've had officers that have 
uh, I know uh, Officer Ruby Begum, who tweeted out oh. some fairly insidious things about Jews, etc., that they were upholding as someone who's cracking down the lockdown protests. They've done campaigns saying being offensive is an offense, and to record non crime hate incidents that don't actually have any legal framework. You can't face your accuser, but they can tar and, and feather your reputation. And being for offensive, years. of course, is not an offense. They, that well, was the uh, Liverpool police, they got that yeah. wrong and they had to apologize. Yeah. They, don't well, even actually, know, they, they don't even know what an offense is. <laughs> Well, they can't classify, but also there was a there was a nationwide campaign that's still up on uh, on I believe it's the Met YouTube channel that says being offensive is an offense. So as much as they turned around but and it's said most I believe should have that, not. <laughs> exactly. Well, to co-op to Jordan Peterson phrase, you can't speak the truth without risking being offensive because you never know how someone's going to act uh, react to whatever you say. So you always have to risk upsetting someone yeah. just to speak the truth. So you you can't go around like stepping on eggshells. Um, the point is. Anyone who's going to be critical of the police should be critical of the police because they've adopted these exact kind of progressive uh, woke talking points that have come out of The Guardian, and it's ruined it because of that. Anyone who's got Spotify, for example, will have heard in the last few weeks, because I'm too cheap to pay for premium, that they're <laughs> saying, oh, um, your identity has never mattered more in the net. Well, the, ident the identity of the person should never matter in the law that's being applied, because that's the point of a, of a liberal, uh, universally moral society. I don't want laws being applied tribally, but clearly the Met Police do. And if anyone's going to critique the police, it's because they've been following these identity politics, uh, uh, woke talking points that come out of The Guardian, and it's strayed them away from people's police. So I think people should be critical of the police. However, that's not the line that these Guardian Easter types are going to go down. And so to say they're inducting them into a pro-police stance, yes... We should have some respect for the law, law and authority, especially with the Peel's police principles. Currently, the police aren't living up to that. So if they were critiquing them in the, in the same way me and you would critique them for being too woke, brilliant. But they're not. And so, personally, I think the, uh, if the police would like some more respect, they should spend less time pe listening to pink-haired protesters and less time listening to people that are going to critique Paw Patrol and more time reading up on Peel and listening to people like you and me. Uh, why do you think the police are so uh, keen on uh, lo um, a a climate change protesters? Because uh, uh, we could see them earlier uh, just up the road from uh, Talk Radio Towers uh, surrounding mm. uh, Tower Bridge. And the police were all standing around smiling with their uh, high-vis jackets on, not doing anything to these protesters as they blocked the Queen's Highway. So it seems it's OK to break the law as long as you're protesting about climate change. Well, it seems it's okay to break the law in general, as long as you're protesting the correct causes. I know, for example, but not the, if you're uh, if you're anti-lockdown, they'll be down on you in uh, like a ton of bricks. Exactly, and I, I think it's all to do with to to do with optics. Obviously, the police have been uh, fairly heavily infiltrated. I know that there's um, Fair Cop as an organisation that's been examining this, particularly the non-crime hate incidents, and they found out that the Met LGBT Caucus, who have actually publicly exposed people's information that have been critical of them on Twitter, um, they're still operating by the EU guidelines long after Brexit, and they're offering uh, operating by their Rainbow Europe campaign. So there's some ideological insidiousness that's infiltrated the Met, and therefore they're policing along political lines. The only thing I will say in the Met's defence earlier was uh, if anyone saw that video going around on Twitter where the Extinction Rebellion van pulled up and they tried to erect another table in the middle of the street and the Met actually rushed them took them apart that is the rare instance where they've done their job and even broken clocks are right twice a day yeah so. um so uh, d uh, exactly exactly right so to go back to poor patrol uh mm. well look the police need all the support they can get uh, so uh, once again it's a good thing isn't it if, if kids are uh, moved or edged towards uh, supporting the police it's not a bad thing i think Yes, if they're if they're edge towards supporting the police in terms of the ideal of what the police should be, and if that's what Paw Patrol's uh, representing, for example, you know the old adage of uh, superhero rescues a cat out of a tree idea. Some moral instruction is very good for our kids, and we shouldn't be foisting on them all this millennial ironic rubbish that that essentially deconstructs an impressionable mind. Um, so it's silly to to say, oh, uh, you're indoctrinating police into authoritarianism. That's the same stance as we've already spoken about uh, a couple of weeks before that they took to comics and then look at the route that's gone down now. Um, I, I think it's very important for, for our children's content, not only to be watched by parents and vetted and making sure that it's informing their young minds, but also to have a, a strong moral center and uh, move them towards a, an aspirational career also. It's, it's not exactly the worst thing to, to be a defender of our society. Absolutely. as long as you do it in the correct way absolutely and also we've now both discovered a, a cartoon uh that we can enjoy so as i say it sounded really really good so i'm definitely gonna can't wait to buy the box set uh, and, and, it, and it, if <laughs> if it annoys the woke warriors then uh it's poor patrol from me from now on uh great to talk connor as always thank you so much thank you uh connor tomlinson a conservative commentator a regular on the show a friend of the show as i say